Pac had did Pac had said some things and put himself on the outs. You feel me? And that's where he made his biggest mistake. You understand? Because once niggas felt like I wasn't fucking with him, so that umbrella is gone. Once the umbrella's gone, my nigga, you get rained on. Somebody's gonna be like, nah, I was only respecting the nigga because he was fucking with dude. With dope. That's it. Yeah. And that's what happened. Right. And that's what happened that's what to Pac, my nigga. That's what happened. I had nothing against the nigga, homie. He could have called me at any time and said, yo, Jack, I didn't say what they said I said about you at home girl, right? Because he saw me and Madonna coming out the restaurant. And when they, when they interviewed him and said, your man Jack just left it with Madonna. And you know what you mean, her just cool. He's all man, fuck that bitch, fuck that nigga. And, and he went on. I said, damn, man, me and nigga, nigga, cool, man. What would make that nigga? I said, man, he ain't say that. You know how much niggas called me that day? She gave me the paper, gave me the magazine, and said, man, look what, you been checking for this nigga, Jack. Look what this nigga just said about you. And, you know what I mean? And, it, and I just, been, I couldn't do nothing but get quiet and just slay. Damn. Everybody warned me about this nigga, man. You know? And from that day, we never spoke again. I never sent nobody at him, but we never spoke again. For today, a whole different respect. <laughs> After hearing what his kids had to say, his wife, his friends, that's when you get to know a person by the people he surround himself with. You understand? So I just want to tell Wag this, man. People might see you on the internet doing your thing, but they don't know your marketing. I know better. They don't know no better. He's marketing himself, and they don't get it. He's getting money off of them every time they send a hate mail. Right. He's laughing all the way to the bank. Right. I know better. Y'all think Wag That's crazy. Right laying y'all out, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, so I want to say, I really, I'm really glad he chose here, he could have went anywhere for his birthday, but I guess he wanted me included and be inclusive in his family, that's more important to me than any money, I got to meet his friends, his family, his children, his wife, and I, today, after today, it's a whole different kind of love and respect for what, I want to tell you that, I'm glad he brought you down here, I met y'all today for five to in the documentary, you addressed the Tupac situation for the first time. The first time ever you actually addressed the situation. You know what I'm saying? Everyone always wanted to know that. And was that tough for you or that was something you, that it felt good after you got it off your chest? Uh, listen, I always wanted to tell a story. The problem is this. You'll never be able to change Tupac fans' minds on whatever Pac said. It's almost like the Trump fans. I still believe he won the presidential race. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> you can, a good right. analogy. But I need the thing about it is this: the nigga that actually robbed and shot Pop is on YouTube telling niggas he did it. You feel me? Wow. But they don't want it. They don't want that to be the guy. They yeah. want yeah. me to be the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You, know, you know, people so believe what they like, want to believe. You can't you stop them from did. believing he what they want to believe. I know that he did it. Wow. Not that I sent them. But I know he did it. You right. feel me? Because you in the hood, you know whatever everything goes down, who did what. Right. Right? So they don't want to listen to him because he didn't say that Jack was involved. Right. You understand? Right. So my thing, anybody who know me like Akon told him the other day, if I do something to you, right, I will tell you I did it. Right. You understand? Right. Because I don't care about what another nigga want to do in these streets because we can go head up. All you got to do is suit up right. and I'm with you. Right. Than you do, but as long as the statute of limitation ran out and I don't have to worry about the law, I will tell the world I did it, and right. I'm still telling you I didn't do it, wow. and I had nothing to do with it. Wow. Now this is the last question. Understand? This is the last question because I know you know you remotely. Um, did you really have Madonna um eating jerk chicken and Flatbush? Yeah. <laughs> Which is that? Yeah. That's good. You cool? No, I'm straight. I can share with with dogs. Straight. straight. That's my own dude. That shit nasty. Come on, brother. You like you know a bunch of junk? I just wanted to clear my throat. You lost best rap video. You all disappointed about that? Oh no, I didn't lose. See, because I sold six and a half million copies, so hey, won. I won. When all these famous people get together. What's the one thing you take away? Is everybody much shorter than you thought? I know a lot of people find Snoop and say, you know, six foot four, I had no idea. Oh, yeah. But do people seem shorter? There's a lot of attitude going on. What do you, what's the one thing you take away? Oh, it's a lot of attitude, of course, because nobody thought we would show up here. But, you know, we, we always feel like we're keeping it real. Not f scratch that. We always felt like we're being true to everything we've always stayed exactly. representing. And our audience is worldwide. We're not even on no 
you know, we coming out here and it's some East Coast, West Coast. We got beef with the people we got beef with. But we could go anywhere in the country because we are America's most wanted. Exactly. So you can't stop the flow. Can't stop it. People you know, think I just got out of jail was like, just because I got shot in the East Coast, I'm like, fuck the East Coast. Yeah, you know, no. half the rappers from the East Coast was there when I got shot. Nobody knew a thing. That's just like you coming to the hood and the police ask them what happened. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, I don't know. You know they lying. Mm -hmm. And all I was doing was like, Give me my proper etiquette. If Biggie was out here on the West Coast, he was in the studio with me and we homeboys, and he got shot. No, I wouldn't tell him who did it, but he would want. I wouldn't go ride on the niggas who did it, but he would want to know who did it. Then mm -hmm. I'd be like, Look, man, these niggas from Watts did it. Woo, this is why they want to talk to you. When, when, when? That's how I do it. Just like when the niggas from the '60s wanted to get a stretch, I went to them personally and talked to them. Mm -hmm. I do it by the rules of etiquette. So I got shot. I'm like, Yo, what happened? Come see me in jail. Biggie all in the air to my ear pockets, my homeboy wound, but not seeing me. My homeboy Stretch is going to Biggie's concerts. Niggas is like abandoning me. But all in the air and on TV, they like, yeah, pop, rest, you know, keep the struggle on. I was like, yo, I'm starting to turn into like Slick Rick. Mm -hmm. Niggas is just gonna act like I'ma just be in jail and they gonna give me shout outs and try to take my position. Mm -hmm. And if you watch, that's what Biggie did. I told you know, him that I trained, he was supposed to be, he was supposed to be thug life. Mm -hmm. All while he was coming up, I used to let him come on stage with me. He was screaming thug life. Hey, cause I he was like, I hate Canadian. Brooklyn, I hate New York. I'm out with them niggas puppy cheating me. Woo, woo, woo. All of a sudden, he blew up and he wasn't saying thug life. Mm -hmm. So I started getting mad and I was seeing the niggas place. He was hugging me, yo, Puck. Yo, thank you. He was the only nigga that woo, woo, woo. But he, and he told me, like, about a week before I got shot, he knew the nigga that was shot me and he was like, Pop, don't hang around this nigga. You know me, you know how we walked in with the nigga that shot me. Ended up shooting me. He's like, Pop, don't fuck with this nigga because I knew the nigga too. He was my mm -hmm. Kogi fan. And uh, I was like, What you mean? He's like, I'll talk to you about it later. And we didn't talk. Ne the next time I saw him was at the studio where I got shot. So I knew he knew what happened. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Biggie, what happened? He kept sending me messages like a bitch, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna come see you. No, nigga, what happened? While I'm in jail, strangers is telling me, Yo, you don't know? Biggie homeboy shot you. Cause they bragging, they telling they niggas in jail. Yo, we just got pot, woo, woo, woo. And my cousin was in jail in New York cause I got family out there. Mm -hmm. He sitting right there while the niggas get in the car going, yo, my homeboy's just jacked that nigga Tupac. So that's how I knew, shot me, what happened and everything. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Bullets Gotti. I want to say happy birthday to the late, great Tupac Amari Shakur. He was born today, you know what I'm saying? June 16th, 1971. You know what I'm saying? Basically, in East Harlem, you know what I'm saying? His mother was incarcerated at the time, you know what I'm saying? I think she was in the, the Lady of Attention in Manhattan. I think she was locked up there in the tomb. If I'm not mistaken, he was. she was in the tomb at the time. When she, uh, when she basically was pregnant with him. And he was, he was, <coughs> basically, he was born in Harlem. He was born in, not Harlem Hospital. But he was born at, um, damn, what the fuck is that hospital? The name of the hospital. It's going to come to me. But he was born in East Hall. And he changed the game. Changed the world. You know what I'm saying? Took it to different levels, right? And I always say this, right? A lot of people say, oh, Suge Knight was a downfall of Tupac, right? They like to blame Suge Knight. Oh, Suge Knight did Suge Knight did, right? But Suge was the only one that kept it real with Pac. Suge didn't line Pac up. Suge didn't have Pac robbed and set up. You know who I say? 
that was how you say the the perpetrator or the piranha the snake the one that basically ruined Tupac that made him angry when he came out was Haitian Jack the snitch named Haitian Jack Haitian Jack made that man bitter and angry Haitian Jack is the cause of the beef with Biggie and Pop Haitian Jack was the cause of the whole supposed East West rivalry. Let's just keep it real. Supposed. It wasn't even a real rivalry. You know what I'm saying? They always put Jimmy Henchman, this one and that one. But I always say, well, why they always why is Haitian Jack escaping out here unscathed and you know, nobody is calling Jack out. Nobody pointing their fingers and saying, yo, Jack was the one that caused everything that happened to Pop. It was Jack. It's Haitian Jack that the snitch, Haitian Jack. The 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 guy that was that got immunity, you know what I'm saying? That did so much dirt in New York City, but was working undercover for them Fetty boys. You know what I'm saying? He was working undercover. You know what I'm saying? Like you listen to his hip hop on the cover, he talked about how he was in the military and how he was on the run and all of this, right? But what they don't tell you was when he got deported, he lost his diplomacy. What people don't understand is Haitian Jack parents was diplomats. You know what I'm saying? They were part of Papa Doc's regime, his family. You know what I'm saying? So he came here with diplomacy. Okay, diplomacy and all that. You know, when you're a foreign diplomat, it's just like when you look at these these Colombian cartel bosses. They had diplomacy because of their military ties and who they was connected to politically. But with Haitian Jack case, let's get back to Haitian Jack. Haitian Jack, the snitch named Haitian Jack, you know, who I say was the was basically The, the shit start and the instigator of the East West problem. Um, well, what happened at Quad Studio? We gotta remember the dudes he sent, the dude that shot Pop is a Flatbush general. Jack shouts him out all the time, but people never put two and two. Together, who was the one that pistol whip took his jewelry? Everybody say Dexter Isaac. Dexter Isaac is a patsy. He wasn't the one that shot Pac. He wasn't the one that took Pac Roly. He didn't take Pac Chain. He didn't take nothing. Dexter Isaac wasn't even at the scene. That was some bull that they put together. Who robbed Pac? I'm not gonna say his name, but he's incarcerated right now. But it's not Tut. Tut was there because Tut went to court with Pox Roley. That's what people keep missing. Tut went to court with Pox Roley. That's how Tut got incarcerated, and he thought Tut was behind the murder of Pac and also the robbery. Tut went to the courthouse. He was going to leave. He went to the courthouse. They snatched him up, threw him on the ground, and they took him back down. But he went to court with Tupac Roley. And, like I said, they had him out there to say, oh, this dude is the one that killed him. But he wasn't. He was on the scene of the robbery. And Nubs, who also was on the scene of the robbery, that was there at Raw Pop. Okay? Old boy, which I'm not going to say his name because he's incarcerated. But old boy, that is a flatbush general, 
and he was uh known for robbing dudes and extorting dudes and taking dudes jewelry. You hear Lil Sean and a lot of other people talk about this dude. Well, this dude was the one that robbed and shot Tupac at Quad Studios. On the the okay for Asian Jack. Asian Jack basically was the one that was behind the whole thing. Via Jimmy Henchman. Which yeah, Jimmy Henchman was associated with it. But it was mostly Jack. A lot of people like to say, oh, it was all Jimmy Henchman. If you listen to Jack and you hear his interviews, he subliminally tells you that he was behind the robbery of Tupac at Quad Studio. Just listen. So when Pac says what he says, he come out there, he said, yo, they know who shot me. The old New York know who shot me. When he said, yo, Biggie came in a spot with a dude that robbed me before I got robbed and shot. He wasn't talking about tight. That's what people keep misconstruing. They thought he was talking about Tut. No, he wasn't talking about Tut. Who he was talking about was the dude that's incarcerated right now. That's in the Fed joint right now. That robbed Pop and shot Pop for the role in the chain. That pistol whip. That's the dude that robbed Pop. That's the dude that shot Pop. That's the dude that took the jury up off him. That's the dude that you hear Zay talk about, the dark-skinned dude. I'm not going to give you his name. I'm not going to say his name. But dudes can read between the lines of who I'm talking about. So, they lined up Pac at Quad Studio for Jack. When you listen to Jack's interview, you hear him say, oh, you know, they call me hang-ons and all that, right? See, the girl, Ayanna Jackson, right? Ayanna Jackson was a known hoe out of Brooklyn. Everybody from Brooklyn that was in the streets done had that. You know, Nut had it. Um, all them cats done had it. You know, even world. You know, it was mad dudes that done was sleeping with Shorty, right? And Jack even was messing with Shorty. He said Hitchman was even messing with Shorty. So Shorty, you know, when they know who ran the train on Shorty, dude, Rick, and Jack, they did what it did to Shorty. But she ran on and said that Pac, it had something to do with it when Pac fell asleep on the couch and he ain't even touched Shorty. He ain't had nothing to do with it. Like he said, if he'd have known, he would have told Shorty to go. But Shorty was a dot, a straight up dot, that this is what, you know, this is what happens. See, a lot of people don't understand. Pac had a lot of real serious dudes around him. A lot of dudes in New York had love for Pac, the Preens. You know, unique, shout out to unique, you know, the, you know, e-money bags, a, a lot of serious dudes, and especially dudes out of Queens and Harlem, you know what I'm saying, a few dudes out of Bronx, it's a lot of real official dudes that, that had genuine love for Pac, and when people say Pac hated New York, he didn't hate New York, his hate was towards the niggas in Brooklyn. Because the niggas in Brooklyn lied to him. That's why you hear a lot of niggas in Brooklyn got a lot of gripe towards Pac. You don't hear niggas in Queens or niggas in the Bronx or niggas in Harlem saying, yo, F Pac. No, it's mostly the niggas from Brooklyn that got the problem with Pac. Because the niggas that robbed them were from Brooklyn. They were from Flatbush and East New York. The two dudes that robbed them. Like I said, the dude... That, that shot him and robbed him was from Flatbush. You know what I'm saying? And he was a known Flatbush general. And you hear Haitian Jack big them up all through his interview. You got to realize something. Jack 
just like John Bloody Hatchet, just like Larry Davis, these dudes were confidential informants. Okay. If you look in look at Pistol Pete, read Pistol Pete book closely, right? The Sex Money Murder book. You know what I'm saying? And you hear the stories about Jack Means that got murdered, right? That's a truth. His means that he ran the barbershop with got murdered by SMM niggas. You know what I'm saying? And um uh, they was gonna pop Jack with. You know, they wanted to get at Jack. You know what I'm saying? They wanted to test Jack. You know what I'm saying? It's like I said in my previous video about Tut. You know, Pete got into it with Tut before they shipped Tut to the um feds. He got in it with Tut. You know, some say it was over the pock shit. Some say it was over some other shit. But a lot of people said it was a over the pock shit. You know, um, Jack, they went at Jack for the tunnel. Jack back down. He ain't won. He ain't won. You know what I'm saying? He ain't won. You know what I'm saying? And Pete didn't like Jack. There was a lot of niggas that didn't like Jack. Because you got to look at it. Jack, in the industry, he was the hip-hop police and the feds go-to guy. This is why a lot of investigations, he was getting next to a lot of rap. He was getting led next to a lot of people. And the feds was on these people. You know what I mean? The bad boys. 50. You know, he was trying to get next to 50, but shout out to 50 for dubbing him. You know, Murder Inc. You know, Peter Shoe. Look at Peter Shoe. Peter Shoe talks about it subliminally. Who he talks about. When you hear his interview with, with Cavario, what he's speaking about? He's speaking about basically dealing with Madonna and the dude, like he said. He put me, he hooked me up with her and such and such. And this is what happens. Who we talking about? We talking about Jack. Jack hooked him up with Shorty. And look, the feds got on him. You know what I'm saying? What people got to understand, you got to read between the lines. You know what I'm saying? Jack is and was, you know, the feds go to guy for everything moving in the streets. That's how they was able to build cases around a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? He was going in there extorting dudes. He was extorting Steve Stout. You know what I mean? He was extorting a lot of dudes in the industry, shaking them down, getting money. But it wasn't just only him that was in the industry that had ties with them, with them Fetty boys. It was a couple. But he was one of them that when he had the situation with the dude from BMF and they had the um shootout out there in LA, that's when the feds cut ties from, from him. And he said they made him sit down and he got deported out of the States. You know what I mean? He blew cover. So the feds do what they do best, man. Just like how they do all their other peoples. You know what I mean? These confidential informants, it's not only in, you know, with black street gangsters. You got the Gregory Scarpers. You got the Danny Greens. You got the Whitey Bulges. You know what I'm saying? If you want to talk with black, look, let's talk about it. You got fucking um, Jack. Larry Davis, there's many dudes you could say that's CIs, whether it was police, whether it was with the feds, they were CIs, you know what I'm saying, they were CIs, and they was doing it what it did, so when you look at Haitian Jack, and you look at how he lined up Pac, and how if you look at both, look at the, look at Biggie Kate, look at Biggie, the time of Biggie's demise, right? And Pac's demise. The feds was investigating Death Row and Bad Boy. Okay? They were investigating Death Row and Bad Boy. They was investigating Bad Boy for their ties with certain individuals, just like with Death Row. 
So if they knew that Biggie and Pac was going to be murdered, they could have stopped it. They just didn't. So the thing about it with the whole case, like with Biggie and Pop, you know what I'm saying? It was some Comatel Pro shit. It was some William O'Neill shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I look at a Haitian Jack, he's a William O'Neill to me. You know what I'm saying? He's no different than William O'Neill. You know, that's why, I like, you look at what happened with Pop. This nigga took all this. Oh, I'm keeping it real. I'm a real nigga. But you and your man lined up Pac. You know what I'm saying? Y'all lined up Pac, but you wanted to do the discipline in the Pac because he called you a hang on. You know what I'm saying? And this is why Pac was so angry. Like a lot of people say, oh, Pac was angry with the whole East Coast. No, he wasn't. He wasn't angry with the whole East Coast. But he still was rocking with niggas in New York. He still had love in New York, Jersey, New York, you know what I'm saying? He still had love in the in, in NYC and NJ. He still got the love. When he came out here, who he came out, who he was with? He was with Jersey niggas, New York niggas. Especially he had four green niggas out there. He had Queens niggas. He had Pac. Nas tells you who was out there. With Death Row East Tees. It was Queens. <coughs> to Jersey. <coughs> to Jersey. It was Queens. To Jersey. To Fort Green. Because you had Fort Green dudes out there. <coughs> that was out there repping with Sugar Mill. You know? So don't get it twisted. Like Pac wasn't loved and respected by the real one. That's why I like when you look at dudes like Haitian Jack. They talk all this. They was real listen, real that. But they ain't confront Pac. But he came to New York. You know what I'm saying? And he came to New York multiple times. Niggas did not confront him. Niggas ain't even had powers in the jail. Niggas ain't did nothing to him in the jail. You hear Fat Joe? Hear what Fat Joe said, yo. Fat Joe, you know what I'm saying? Was mad, had mad respect and love for Pac. He was holding Pac down. You know what I'm saying? And he was going to be on the One Nation album with Nas. You know what I'm saying? So it was a lot of dudes that had love and respect for Pop. And not all of Brooklyn had hate for Pop. You know, you had Smith and Wesson that was rocking with Pop heavy. Tech and Steel, Buckshot. So not everybody had the stain of hate for Pop. You know, the niggas that had problems with Pop. Was the niggas from certain section in Brooklyn. And that section was Flatbush. You know what I'm saying? That section was Flatbush. Um, because the dude that shot him was a Flatbush general. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, he's doing life in prison right now. You know what I mean? He's still incarcerated. He's trying to get out on the pill, but he was... The one that shot Pac. He was the one that robbed Pac for his jewels. You know what I mean? He was the one that basically was there to discipline him. And they try to say Tut. Like I said, Tut only had. And the crazy thing about this, right? But people don't look about Jack, right? And this how you know Tut is a real dude, right? And I give my flowers to Tut, right? I'm going to tell you why Tut is a real dude. Even though Tut did a lot of grimy, sh shasty shit. And I'm not talking about like with the whole pie shit. But I'm talking about like with, you know, other things that he was doing. Like the petty shit. Petty robbery shit. But this is my thing that I respect about Tut. He could have gave all them dudes up. What people don't understand is like, 
Tut is saving these dudes. Because he could tell on all these men. You know what I'm saying? He could, he could definitely tell on Jack. Because the case he locked up for, that basically he went to the crib to the shorty Crystal who got, who they actually went looking for her man, TT, who worked for King Do Riley. Welcome home, Ken Do Riley, who basically they went there to rob him. She was in the crib. They raped her. The nigga that's incarcerated right now, that's the Flatbush General. That's what I'm gonna call him in this video. The Flatbush General that's incarcerated right now. That's in the same facility as Tut. Okay. Basically. Him and a couple other dudes went in there, raped this girl repeatedly, and told her, yo, she testified this is what's going to happen. Now, nigga Tut, what he should have never did was go to the building, back to the crib, and told the girl anything about, yo, sorry, what happened. Even though he was cool with her brother, he had no right to do that. That's how he got caught up in it. This is how he got incarcerated. But when they locked him up, when he went to parole, when they locked him up, they locked him up over him having Tupac's watch. They thought he had murdered Tupac. <laughs> and it was from the Co-op Studio robbery. Now, like I said, the thing what people don't understand, if we look at the situation, right, these niggas was doing foul shit. Now, like I said, Tuck could expose these niggas. They done put dirt on his name. Um, Dexter Isaac done lied on boy. You, you heard him, he lied on this nigga. He, he yo, Tuck ain't this shit. He turned sucker on. Like, he was, like, literally lying on dude. You know what I'm saying? Going in on dude, you know, and, and, and this is a dude that's doing life in the feds right now. You know what I'm saying? With no possibility of parole. You know what I'm saying? So, with a dude saying that, because he trying to promote his book, and he trying to get out, so he gonna put everything on tight. When we all know Jack was responsible for that situation with having an old girl, because he was the one that sent them, them niggas to the crib. So, him sending them niggas to the crib to have old girl basically, you know, them doing what they did to old girl. And then, you know, when homie came there, the feds snatched him up and he, you know, did what he did to get out of his situation. He told the nigga TT, he told. So, it's a sad situation because... This nigga's doing life in prison, and he held the game. Even though, like I said, the nigga basically could have told on everybody, including the Flatbush General. You know? You know? So, that's a messed up situation, but that's what happened. Now, back to Quad, and just back to you know, what happened with Pac, you know, Pac, he really thought homie was his mans, you know what I'm saying, like, Jack was his mans, and he was going to the clubs every night with Jack, the tunnels, you know, the club USA's, you know, they was going to the Palladium, and popping bottles, and drinking champagne, Manhattan proper, and Nails, niggas was going to nails and shit, which is now up and down now. It used to be nails, but now it's up and down. Um, Just living a high life, you know, living good, you know what I'm saying? You know, and then to see a nigga do you like that, a nigga that you call your mans, you know, you tell him, yo, son of hang on, and he disrespected him, and he violated him. So because he violated the nigga, and said what he said about him. 
Jack felt some type of way. And with Jack feeling some type of way, Jack sent them boys at him. You know what I'm saying? Now, what he told Henchman on the phone, he said what he said to Henchman. Now, to say Henchman, like, they put all the thing on Henchman. It's like, come on, my man. We, like, I, I could see niggas don't like the nigga Henchman. But don't put all of it on Henchman. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, now you trying to make this nigga escape out like this nigga's not a grimy nigga and he ain't did no grimy shit and line this man up. Like dudes is going to let act like, oh, no, Jack ain't, Jack ain't lying, Pac, up. Jack, no. Jack did. You know what I'm saying? Because Pac went to jail for these dudes with the guns and the whole rape thing. He he ate a charge for these niggas that was disloyal. You know, Haitian Jack was disloyal. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't no, no nigga that you call a real sir. Nah, he was a disloyal ass dude. Like when I watched that hip hop undercover shit, right? Shout out to Big U, shout out to Ben. Shout out to Bimmy and shout out to Big U. But I felt like Eric B should have had that hip hop undercover spot. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to tell, we got to be, we got to keep it authentic. Because Jack was shaking down and setting artists and dudes that was in the industry up with the feds. Let's keep it all the way real. Let's keep it all the way real. He, he lined up Jimmy in North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? You know, so what happened to Pete and. A lot of dudes in the industry got lined up because of Jack and in the streets, you know, because he was the, he was, he was the feds and the police go to me, you know what I'm saying? This is how he, he didn't never, you never heard of Haitian Jack facing any type of federal conspiracy. And this nigga did all the crimes in the city. Everybody else did quadruple numbers in the feds. Cream, Jimmy, Pete, World, everybody. Everybody, you know, Poe, everybody. I did numbers in the Fed. Lou Hobbs, you know, Ty, everybody in the Fed. But Jack wasn't. So when he linked up with Pac, late 92, you know what I'm saying? They develop a friendship. Right? 93, he was there. Pac was filming Above the Rim. But a lot of people get it misconstrued. Above the Rim was never based on anything with any Jimmy Henchman or Jack. Above the Rim was based on Joe Ham and his brother. That's what a lot of people don't know. Shout out to Barry Michael Cooper. You know what I'm saying? That movie was based on Joe Ham and his brother. You know what I'm saying? His brother was a drug dealer. And Joe Hammond was dabbled in the game, but got addicted. And, you know, he was a street ball legend. So Tom Shepard's character was based on Joe Hammond, and Birdie's character was based on his brother. You know, Joe Hammond's brother. Okay, so when he was doing Bullet, Bullet was the movie that he was riding around, going through Brooklyn, and, you know, Connecting with a lot of the Brooklyn gangsters, you know what I'm saying, and that's where he was with Jack and Jimmy Henchman and all of them. And he was, and if you watch the movie Bullet, he was dressing like how the Brooklyn dudes was dressing. So that was the movie that he was, you know, linking with Jack with. Jack, you know, he was going to Tito. Got his jewelry, copped his jewelry from Tito and shit. You know, his chain, his his role, you know, like that came from Tito, right? But you see, the thing that what people miss out about Pac, Pac had a lot of love from the street dudes. A lot of love. You know what I'm saying? And what the thing with Jack was, if you listen to the Info Minds interview that Zane, Zay did, and when he talked about how Pac and Jack fell out, 
when you listen to Jack subliminally, he telling you that he had a hand in Pops robbery. robbery. When you listen to a lot of these dudes and you hear how they talk, you know, and he's a great manipulator. That's what Jack is, a great manipulator. But he was what he was. He wanted to manage Pop. Pop didn't want to be managed by him. You know what I'm saying? And Pac didn't want to, you know, follow protocol. And after what dudes ain't eat the charges, you know what I'm saying? And they basically didn't eat it. They take the gun charge. He at the gun charge and the, and the whole rape thing and got him caught up in the shit. I was like, fuck these dudes. These niggas just hang, hang around. Tyson told him, yo, cut them niggas off. So when Tyson told him to do that, dudes felt some type of way. That's why they... They did what they did to him at Quad. You know what I'm saying? But Pac kept it 1,000. He kept the same energy. And, like, that's why when you look at 50, you saw how 50, 50 was going at the same niggas that Pac had issues with. You want to know why? Because 50 come from, he come from that, what you say, that school of Pac. You know what I'm saying? You notice... Soon as 50 got in the game, who he went at? Henchman. You know what I'm saying? He said what he said about, you know, old boy, you know, about Tut on on um many men. You know what I'm saying? He was saying a lot of stuff in his records. But you like, yo, 50, 50 going at niggas. Is, you know what I'm saying? But 50 had every right to go at these niggas. Because these niggas was trying to do the friendly extortion shit. And what Pac was saying was no lie. You heard it out. 50, 50 even was saying the same. The same thing that Pac was saying in 90, 94, 95. It's the same thing 50 was saying. If you listen to Pac's Kevin Powell interview. And you listen to his Rob Marriott, Marriott interview. Right? You listen to that Marriott, Rob Marriott interview. That last one he did. And that Kevin Powell interview. What he said, a lot of these niggas in the East Coast been getting extorted. You know what I'm saying? They was getting extorted. You know what I'm saying? They was getting extorted. And, you know, like, Pac knew of Jimmy Hinchman, dude, Peter Thomas, David Hyde, and know, with that how can I be damned. They had a relationship. But Jimmy Hinchman was known for extorting artists. That's what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. He, he, he was he was fair with his artists, you know what I'm saying? But he wasn't a greasy nigga like a Haitian Jack was. Haitian Jack job was just to squeeze on niggas. That's what he did. He he was a squeezer. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at a Haitian Jack, he is no different than a Gregory Scarper, a, a Whitey Bozier, Danny Green, you know? You know, and and and, and you know, even a Larry Davis, you know, and a lot of others that was confidential informants that was playing both sides of the fence. You know what I'm saying? That's what Jack was. He was playing both sides of the fence. He was playing the street side when he wanted to, and then he was playing the stitch side. And that's how, you know, when Pac said what he said, people were like, oh, yo, Pac don't know what he's talking about. Pac know what he was talking about. Dudes in the streets know what he's talking about. That's why they don't. They don't, you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Niggas want to moralize a nigga, but let's keep it real. Jack was a foul, shysty dude. He did, he didn't keep it 1,000. So when people like to blame Suge, Suge ain't rob Pac. Suge ain't get Pac shot up. Suge ain't put a, 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 a chick on Pac. To say that, oh, he he raped me and all that? No. Oh, great me? You can't, I don't know, they they, they say you can't say the, the R word. So, great me, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, Suge ain't do that. Suge stood by his means. Jack had a girl who lied. Ayanna Jackson lied and said that Pac sexually assaulted her when he didn't. That was Jack's doing. 
And then when Jack come out there and try to blame Suge, nigga was hating on Suge because Suge was a real homie. Pac died for the homie Suge. Because Suge was his man's to the to the wheels full of. You know what I'm saying? So when he went to the West, he was riding with them because they rolled for him. Suge rolled for him. Just like when 50 went to the West, nobody was riding for 50 in the East. He went, linked up with Shady and them, and, and, and it was love. Loyalty, you got to look at it. Loyalty come from places that you don't even expect it to come from. Pac of New York was a New York dude from heart. He loved New York. But them dudes in Brooklyn did him filthy. And he had to, and like Pac said, man, it's like, you know what the secrets to war. And he got with the right side, the right team that was going to hold him down. And when he came back to New York, you saw what he came back to New York with Jersey dudes, Queens dudes, Brooklyn dudes, you know what I'm saying? Harlem dudes. They was with Pac, riding with him. They was riding with him. When they came to the MTV, you listen to Nas' interview. Who he said Pac had out there? Queens dudes was out there with Pac. Jersey dudes was out there with Pac. And you also had a few Brooklyn dudes. Via Four Green was out there with Pac. So when dudes try to say, oh, Pac ain't had no love on the East Coast and he was banging on the East Coast. No, he was banging on them dudes in Brooklyn that did him wrong. And he ain't had hate for Brooklyn. He had hate for the dudes in Brooklyn that did him wrong. And that was Jack and them. That's why he said what he said about Jack on against all odds. Why you think he went at Jack the way he did? You know what I'm saying? Why you think he said, yo, told Jimmy Hinchman at the end, man, you told me to get my money right, now I got my money, he said, you told me to get my money right, now I got my money right, now I'm ready to go to war, you know what I'm saying, he was letting them niggas know, like, yo, but more importantly, he was letting Jack know, homie, I'm talking to you, you sent them dudes at me, like he said, Jimmy Hinchman, Tut, if you read his letter, he said, Jimmy Hinchman, Tut, Big and Puff, they could tell who was the ones that lined me? He said Jack was the one that lined me, but they could tell who was the one that shot me. Because they knew. But they didn't. So that's what happened to him. So when they say, yo, the nigga, when people say, oh, you throwing stones, Haitian Jack was what he was, man. He was a he was an agent for the feds. He was William O'Neill, the 90s version of William O'Neill. And the, and the sad part about it is, is that dudes will respect this dude when we know this dude was the reason why the East and West Coast beats happened. Biggie and Pac would have been alive today if he didn't line that man up at Quad Studio. Let's keep it real. And he also had Biggie robbed. So, if he didn't line Big, if, if he didn't line Pac up, at Quad Studio, Pac would have still been breathing, man. Big would have never had, it would have never been no East West beef. Wouldn't have been none of that. Dudes would have got money. He started that coastal beef. The snitch named Haitian Jack started that East West beef. That's why now, you know, if we go back and look at it, Pac. Would have been 51 today. You know. Big would have been 50. You know what I'm saying. Both of them would have been chilling. Enjoying life. In their 50s. But now all we could do is think about the memories. Because. Of a selfish dude. Named Haitian Jack. Caused the whole coast. From both coasts. To go against each other. All because. Of his influence and his backing of being a Comatel Pro agent.
It's facts. It ain't no cap. It's the truth. You know? So, it is what it is, man. It's your boy, Bullets Gotti, man. We got to keep it real, man. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't keep it real, who else going to keep it real? We got to really take, we got to really look at that. And we got to analyze that. Like, now this, you know, today is Pac's birthday. We got to analyze, like, what if, you know, Pac never would have got down with Jack and got so tight with Jack and just would have stayed with, you know, his homies in Queens. He would have never dealt with the BS that Jack brought at him. Those are things that make you go home sometimes.